Do the dead really die? Where do we go when we die? Do we hang around for just a little bit longer? The soul goes on, yes, but the body has ceased. Just because the vessel is in the ground does not mean we go with it. Here are four stories. Who is the haunted? And who is the haunter? Ask Isabel. Lucy. A life worth living, a star in the sky. The song plays over and over in her head on a loop. This song was her favorite as a child. Her dad used to sing it to her while playing his acoustic guitar before he hung himself in the basement. Lucy was always going to be a troubled child. She was a beautiful girl with dark blonde hair that hugged her shoulders and sad blue eyes. Her mother had said she looked like a china doll when she was born, so fragile and delicate. As she grew, Lucy developed this fire in her eyes that never went away. The 70s were a back end of the 60s. Sex, drugs, and rock and roll just didn't vibe like they used to. Free love led to venereal disease, and drugs led to addiction. It wasn't about loving one another and feeling good anymore. It was about numbing the pain and forgetting yourself for a small moment in time. When those small moments weren't enough, you just found ways to constantly get a fix, which meant addiction had taken its hold, and it wasn't going to let go without a proper fight. Lucy's father killed himself when she was five. She found his body swinging over her dollhouse that she was getting ready to go play with in her basement playroom. She had no idea what her daddy was doing, swinging by his neck. She only knew it looked really scary and that her mother needed to help him. When Lucy's mother came down on the child's insistence, Lucy's mother collapsed, screaming and crying in such a manner that terrified Lucy. Then the cops came. Then the paramedics. They got him down and took her daddy away. Lucy never saw him again. They couldn't afford a proper funeral. He was buried in a cemetery in the middle of a deserted highway out on the west side of town. They didn't even go to watch the burial. They never went to his grave. Lucy just knew he was out there, somewhere, in the middle of nowhere, rotting into the ground. Daddy left us in hell. We have to take care of what he did that was wrong. He is a coward. Her mother told her instead of telling her that he had died. So Lucy's early concept of death was that it was something that people did to get out of their problems. When her grandmother died of cancer when Lucy was seven, she surmised that her grandmother died to not have to deal with being sick. Death was an easy way out. The present was hell. Only cowards get out of hell. Lucy took that view and grew with it. Her high school years came to her in a smoke-filled haze of boys, sometimes girls, and lots of illegal substances. She didn't have proper friendships. She had lovers, and plenty of them. She had lost her virginity at 14, and never seemed to stop wanting the close-up attention of another soul. It made her forget the hell that was her life. Her mother worked two jobs just to keep the house they lived in. 
She was a waitress by day and a dancer by night. Lucy's mom let Lucy do as she pleased. It was 1976, and there was no real law stating that she had to finish high school in the state they lived in. There was no need to look after her daughter at all. She could feed herself, clean herself, and look after herself. Her mother provided her with things, but that was it. They barely spoke, and they barely saw each other. By the time Lucy's mom came back in the early morning, Lucy was asleep and still sleeping by the time Lucy's mom had to get up to go to the restaurant for her waitressing shift. When Lucy's mom got home to take a quick nap before heading to the gentleman's club, Lucy was long gone and out with her friends. They existed in the same space, but never really coexisted. Lucy didn't want to be around her mother anyway. She was such a drag. She was always working or entertaining men at the house. Lucy didn't like those men. They were grabby and forceful. Lucy's mom had, on more than one occasion, let the men sneak into Lucy's room when Lucy was asleep and do what they wanted with her. Lucy went with it, but didn't like it at all. She began locking her bedroom door while she slept, or just stayed at her friend's house. She was no one's whore to do whatever they wanted to. She was a lover who chose who she wanted to be with. Her current boyfriend, Justin, didn't mind that she liked to be with other people. Having a boyfriend to Lucy just meant there would always be someone there after everyone else had gone home. It was nice to just have one person who was consistent. They never talked of commitment or marriage. They were just comfortable sharing the same space and waking up next to each other occasionally. Lucy was in the process of moving out of her mother's house that summer. She was going with Justin to a commune in the mountains. They lived on hard drugs and free love. It was the kind of cooperative community Lucy had always read about and dreamed of being a part of. Living with people who would share in giving love and affection to her was a dream come true after years of neglect. At 17, Lucy was ready to be a part of something other than her mother's decaying house and her lecherous men friends. It was Saturday afternoon and the sun was high and hot. Her mother had just left for work at the restaurant and Lucy had six hours to get all of her belongings in the back of Justin's beat-up hatchback. It wouldn't take the entire six hours. It wouldn't even take an hour. Lucy had everything packed, as there was very little to her name. She took one look at her barren room. There was only her bed and a little table and chair left. Everything else was in boxes or bags and Justin was already loading them up in his car downstairs. She looked down at the doll in her hands, the little Betsy Wetsy that her father had given to her just before he died. It was the last thing he ever gave her before living became hell and life came in a blur. A life worth living, a star in the sky. She began humming her father's little song, sadly. She was leaving her childhood home, the last memories of her dad. Are you almost ready? I got everything packed in there nicely. We will want to leave soon. It will be after nightfall before we get there. Justin's head popped into her room behind her. Yeah, I'm ready, she said, still holding on to Betsy for dear life. You taking the doll, hun? Justin asked, perplexed. Yeah, it's the last thing my dad ever gave me, she whispered. Right, then you should. Okay, let's go. He reached his hand out to her, and they began the descent down the stairs and out of the wretched house forever. A pop for the road? Justin held his hand out, and there were two little white pills. Lucy took one. Matt gave them to me, said they were from Mexico or some foreign shit like that, supposed to be super potent and should make the drive magical, 
he smiled as they both popped them. Lucy was excited. She was getting the life she wanted, the life she needed, far away from the adults that ruined her. It was going to be an amazing place to start over and get a sense of herself. It was going to be one giant psychedelic wave after the other. There were no more hippies in her small town, but the mountains held all the hippies she could ever want in her life. Tomorrow, she would wake up and finally be home. The simple pop for the road was a trip like no other. Lucy was riding with Justin down the highway when the trees alongside the road grew teeth. But they weren't menacing. They were just singing along with the breeze. A life worth living. A star in the sky. Lucy stuck one hand out the window and rode the breeze singing along. Just then, the top of the car disappeared, and she floated out and up. I'm just going up to the stars for a while. I'll be right back. She waved to Justin, and he waved back. A life worth living, a star in the sky. I looked over, and you caught my eye, sunshine. She flew further than she wanted and headed straight for the sun. Man, it's so hot. It's burning my flesh, Lucy said. The sun took a giant spin to turn around. She was met by her father's enormous head. Her father's head was the sun. Maybe I know it's scary, but it gets better. Life is hell, but so is this. Just accept help from whoever offers it. Dad? Dad, what's going on? Is this a bad trip? Something like that. It'll be okay, though. You have some lessons to learn before you can move on. Why is it so hot? Well, darling, you're kind of on fire. Suddenly, Lucy began falling as gravity took hold. Dad! Dad, help! I can't, darling, but you'll be okay. Just accept it. Go with it. A life worth living, a star in the sky, he sang as he spun around and his face was gone. She began falling faster and faster as inertia took hold. The ground was coming quickly into view. She landed hard, but no sound was made, nor was pain felt. Justin! She screamed as she sat straight up. She was in the middle of a wooded area. There was not a soul to be found. Justin! She yelled again as she stood up and tried to brush herself off. She felt weird, like she was detached from her body. Was she coming down? That was the weirdest trip she had ever been on. She tried to ascertain where she was. It was nowhere she was familiar with. They must have gotten to the commune and got out while still high. She surely wandered off from the group and wound up here. But where was here? She began a long period of wandering about. She moved slowly through the woods, looking for any sign of life. She darted between the trees, rushing back and forth, beginning to panic. It wasn't long before she heard voices children's voices 